Hey, so, um, thank you so much for uh, tuning in once again to my sh tuning in like it's the 1950s or something <laughs> like people still use cable uh, for clicking the link to this video. I'm with my friend here, Greg. Greg has been a friend I've made on campus and we've had a lot of great conversations. He's one of the few people uh, I've met in the whole Virginia area that's willing to have an open heart about very sensitive issues, very important issues. But first, I want to talk a little bit uh, from your perspective on uh, your faith mm -hmm. and where you are in terms of your attitude and your outlook on life. Yeah. Yeah, so my <clears throat> my faith is the most important thing about me. Um, mm -hmm. But it it's it's something, I, I feel like it's a journey. I feel like I'm pressing in or pressing deeper on a journey. There have been a lot of difficult things that have happened in life. And um, a lot of those as, a, as a, an adult, I'm, I'm 34, uh, in the last 15 years, 20 years, um, there's just been a lot of um, things that I, I have a hard time making sense of uh, that have happened. And, and so I'm always looking to um, grow in my faith, but sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm hanging on almost kind of white knuckled a little bit. Yeah. Um, or maybe an important difference is maybe I feel like God has hung on to me in times, because there's been times when I've been very angry at with him. Un, un, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, like I, uh, it was a it's, a it's a poor reaction whenever 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 life uh, circumstance the path that God has offered for us is unpleasant I think it's a it's a poor reaction to indict him with it and get angry with yeah. him but I, I I regret to say I have and so um, what I've found is that God is big enough to take my temper tantrums um, and uh, you know there's there's <clears throat> something I learned a while ago was we say all sorts of things. We think and say and do all sorts of things when we're uh, angry, uh, sad, or scared, and I'm no exception. And I think, um, <clears throat> just like a father knows that a, uh, his son, uh, you know, throwing a temper tantrum or uh, you know waking up scared at night or you know just just hysterical for one of those reasons, uh, it doesn't it doesn't really mean the things that he says or mm -hmm. does. I think God is. Most, yeah. well, most people, when they talk about God, they refrain from sort of the negative side of their relationship. They, they, at least they put a face on as though, because I'm a Christian, everything is perfect and great. But what I love about knowing you is that you're very raw about your feelings, and that no, it's it's not perfect. You live in a very imperfect world, mm -hmm. um, and that's a fresh air of. Of reality that I appreciate that you don't get much in the the Christian world, and in the criticism, you know, in the criticism, obviously, even even the criticism of the Christian world, they don't really talk much about how Christians do have a struggle that is not. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'd be much harder without your faith, wouldn't you say? It'd be impossible. I, I I don't know how I would get out of bed in the morning. I would be too afraid to face life. Uh, I the thought that. Um, so when I think about God authoring a plan for my life, <clears throat> that it would include some difficult things, that he, being all-knowing, being all-powerful, being all-wise, and being all-loving to me, mm -hmm. would write into my story to, to get me to where I need to be in my relationship with him. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a much more comforting thought than the fact than than if I were to believe that I was in the hands of fate or at the whim of the devil or, the, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Nature the, or whatever. Nature, whatever it would happen to be. The fact that there's a reason why we go through the hard things we go through, mm -hmm. um, I think makes them bearable. And so, well, when, when, when would you say you became a Christian? About what? I became a Christian at, um, I can tell you exactly, at 2.30 in the morning on March 1st, 2004. 2004. Okay, yeah. so you were, oof, that was 14, or 15 years ago. Yeah. Okay, about 15 years ago. So, and you said you're 30. Mm -hmm. So, 34. Yeah. 30, okay, 34. So, just doing some pretty bad math, you, you that was about when you were 19 years old. Yeah. So, 
I'd imagine that you've changed dramatically, um, even during those 19 years without Christ. But yeah. um, w talk about a little bit what you were like before, and then what was your, what were you like after? Okay. Told you I would wear my heart on my sleeve. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> uh, I was I was very different before. Um, I, uh, I I I had some terrible things happen to me growing up. Um, if you don't want to get into, you don't. I'm not going to force you to get into specifics. I won't drag you through the grueling details, but I do try to. Um, I try to be honest whenever this is asked. Uh, so. Uh, Well, I'll leave it at this. My, my father was the opposite of what a father's supposed to be. I see. And um, and so my my uh, life was just uh, my, so my father my father sexually abused me from age four to probably about age eleven, mm -hmm. and I remember just feeling so dirty and so broken. And so, just worthless, you know. And yeah. and so I, I really, until I became a Christian, you know, my life was one iteration after another of trying to find something to make me feel okay. So uh, I was also bullied really bad when I was little. Um, and so the first time that I tried this, I thought, oh, if I had lots and lots of friends, that seems to be, you know, kids that are popular seem to have it seem, all together. Seem to be happy, have yeah. it all together. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> so I'll give that a shot. I, I kind of remember, you know, when you're that age, you're talking about <clears throat> middle school. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah. But I remember thinking, like, you know, coolness, which really is just confidence. But mm. back then, it kind of seemed like magic. But I remember like deconstructing the magic, you know, like. Oh, if you if you dress this way, if you say these things, if you associate with these people, if you go these places, then it right. equals cool. And so I'll I'll just become popular, you know. Yeah. And I did, and it didn't didn't help didn't help anything. And so when I was sixteen, that was the first time that I was suicidal. Um, I had a plan. Uh, tried to execute it my little brother stopped me my little brother Mike wow. um, praise God yeah I'm very happy that, you, that your brother Mike <laughs> yeah. was there for you yeah me too and Mike is a Mike is another uh, so Mike was my best friend until I met my now wife okay. uh, but he uh, he's developed some very very <clears throat> um, progressed paranoid schizophrenia mm -hmm. and uh, spends his time in and out of jail and mental hospitals and living on the streets and stuff and so that's that's another kind of another chapter you know um, sure. but uh he was in his right mind uh when i was 16 and he stopped me and uh i went into some counseling and i you know i i finished up high school i was ready to leave high school and uh when i got to college i wanted to reinvent myself and so College, you can see I'm a pretty big guy. Uh, in uh, in college, I lost all this weight. I lost 65 pounds first semester. Oh wow! Yeah, and I one went, semester. Yeah, I went to the gym twice a day and Whew. ate salads and you know all nine yards because I figured I've never been thin and thin you know thin people seem to be okay. They seem to have it together and so I'll become thin and we'll see if that works. Let, and let it, me guess, it, it didn't work it out. It didn't work out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and I had this idea that if I had the typical college experience, if I, <clears throat> you know, if I was invited to the right parties and hung out with some cool people and got some girls interested in me and, and things like that, that, that college, you know, if I did the typical college thing, that, um, that I would be okay. And that didn't work out either. And so by the, by the, end of February yeah. my freshman year I was starting to deal with some suicidality again and I remember telling myself well I haven't I haven't tried religion yet you know I was I was I should back up I was raised hyper hyper Roman Catholic mm -hmm. um, 
We switched to a Methodist church when I was 16. I mostly hated it. And um, it wasn't your thing, basically. It wasn't my thing then. Yeah, I, I was confused, I, and I didn't care about God, you know. Um, and then when I got to school, I quit all religious anything, you know. And, um, so what brought you back? Lack of options. So I had, so I, I got to. There's a kicker right there. There's a reason right there. 